So Christian radio host Matt Barber said earlier this week that the Supreme Court's recent decisions in favor of marriage equality have paved the way for societal discrimination against Christians. I thought we were already there. there we go. Uh, apparently, uh, I seem to remember seeing on Fox News that uh, whole war on Christmas thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, did we, did, we, did we lose? Did we win? I don't know, man, and I, I listen to AFR pretty much, uh, you know, whenever I can. I, I can only take so much of it. But I, I thought we were already there. I thought this whole time we were, uh, Christians were being prosecuted against. I, I didn't know it was just starting. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's weird. Weird. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So he says, quote, it's already starting to happen. By laying the groundwork now for the widespread recognition of so-called same-sex marriage as a fundamental constitutional right, something that is absurd on its face, the court has now opened the floodgates for prosecution to occur. What planet does this guy live on? Man, uh, you know, time, the time has changed amazingly. Uh, I'm, I'm blown away. Uh, like I said, I've been paying attention for about a decade. A decade ago, man, you could not get the, you, you could not get this kind of uh, discussion, and it was completely right. My brother is gay, and he, he's very active in the gay community, and politics and he texts me all the time and stuff like that he listens to christian radio brian fisher and all these guys you know th these guys are i mean let's just face it they, they got um they have some deep-seated issues I yeah think. They, they just <laughs> i mean that that's all it is it's it's not a really major deal they can get on the show and talk about it all they want i mean nobody's gonna really listen to them but <laughs> at the end of the day it, it's, it's your problem not mine you know if you're gay then that's fine just Whatever, it's not a big deal. Just it's not on. a big deal. It shouldn't be. <laughs> I don't <know>. Okay. <laughs> and here's uh, here's Barber. Uh, vice, he's the vice president of the Liberty Council Action, and that's a conservative legal group that actually supported Doma. He, and he said that it would put Christians in an untenable position by having to choose whether to render unto God what is God's or render unto Caesar what is God's. So he's just uh, talking pretty much a bunch of bullshit, yeah, saying that we can't, we can't define marriage. And that's what he means. We can't redefine marriage. The Supreme Court can't redefine marriage because that's, that's God's uh, domain. I, I got news for you, Mr. Barber. Right. You're fucking wrong. <laughs> and here's why. We have redefined marriage, and I see this all the time. If you can no longer trade your youngest daughter for a goat or a cow or some money in order to, to marry her off, you have effectively changed the definition of marriage. And, and here's another thing is that people don't understand the difference between a civil marriage, which is the legal part, and the, and the religious ceremony. You can have your religious ceremony. And, and this doesn't even mean that you have to make – the biggest thing that we hear from, from – a lot of right-wing uh, Christian fundamentalists is that you hear like, "Well, great, now we're going to have to marry gays in our church." No, you don't. Because no, you don't. It's a religious ceremony. Now, a lot of chaplains, of course, also have that legal authority, but that doesn't mean they have to marry other people. They now, don't. if they were smart, if they were smart, they probably would marry gay people in their church because then you get a, a, a mass uh, a positive. Uh, repercussion from from the gay community who would attend your church who would de contribute to your uh their 10 percent tithing they i mean it, just because you're gay doesn't mean you're you're not religious but that, that's, that's right the thing. it's like oh he's gay well then uh, he can't believe in god or he believes in god but, but it's my version it's 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 like it's an outward expression of myself so as a result i tend to project my uh my discomfort and my own sexuality onto you so that's what we're left with, and and thankfully, and my dad says this all the time. Thankfully, these guys are going away. Like, right, it, you absolutely. know, it, it's just a matter of time before they're all the dinosaurs are gone, and we get to progress again as a uh, as a civilized society. So, and we, again, we can move on. Let's move on. We've been doing these problems. God, we've been, like this is the same shit that we that I <laughs> like. I remember listening. I was delivering pizzas, listening to talk radio. All these exact same topics. Can't we move on? I'm so tired of these things. But but again, we can't because it's just I don't know why. But like it, it's impossible for people to to accept defeat or uh, and I, I don't even think it's defeat. I think it's just saying you know what uh, you know it's two people that love each other. Who cares? And 
you, you, if you care about abortion as much as you care about, then you would be falling over yourselves to, to support gay marriage because then the, the adoption rates would go through the roof and so many kids wouldn't have to face abortion. They would, they would rather be adopted anyway and have a chance of life. If you're pro-life, then you should want that. Then you should be falling over yourselves. But no, I can't have that because you're not pro-life. You're scared of women. So if yeah, you're if you're really pro-life, you would be pro-birth control, uh, pro-food stamp, pro-WIC, pro-social safety net, pro-sex education. Pro-Medicare, pro-Medicaid, pro-single-payer yeah, health care system. They're, these people are not pro-life. They're, they're pro-birth, they're and that's women. it. And then they toss a yeah, and then they toss a pair of bootstraps at you and say, and not only that, but it's like, uh, and another thing to to address your point that they're they're afraid of women, is the, is the fact that they want to hold women down, because exactly they, because by scary, with with, right? a, with an unwanted child, as a punishment. Mm -hmm. Children should not be a punishment. Yeah, my wife says this all the time. She says uh, if. You know, if men can have abortions, the or I forget where I had this, but I mean, I mean, where you want to have an abortion There'd be a at? Clinic Down the corner, right next to every McDonald's. <laughs> Here's what else Barber once uh, said about this. He said, "Come the persecution, come the penalties, come what may, the full weight of government. We will not pretend that a man can marry a man or a woman can marry a woman under any circumstance, in any context whatsoever." So, so it's kind of it funny me how of the Bill O'Reilly uh, thing where it was like the ducks, right? You know, if you, if you get married, you can get a duck. You, you got to marry ducks, and you got to marry dogs. And... Okay, and, and here's the thing about that, and we cover this all the time. The BTL, Animals right? can't consent. <laughs> there is no consent when it comes. You're not going to have animal marriage. <laughs> Besides, it's actually legal in what thirty something states anyway. It's probably legal in Louisiana. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised knowing who, who's in charge there. Yeah, it's pretty bad over here. So hey, let's guys. go to some real persecution, though. Sure. And, and I want to talk about some real – now, people like Bar Matt Barber, they want to sit there and whine about how they're being prosecuted, persecuted, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, my God, G gay people getting married, I'm being persecuted because I'm a, a bigot. I'm a homophobe. Well, here's some real persecution actually going against LGBT couples. And this is this is actually real persecution. On July first of next year, same sex couples applying for a marriage license in Indiana will have committed a felony. Yes, punishable I've by eighteen months in prison and a ten thousand dollar fine. You want to talk about persecution, that is persecution. That would be uh yeah, that would probably be the textbook definition <laughs> of persecution, excuse me. Exactly. Now, this law uh that was passed in Indiana um, it stems from a revival of a 1997 law forbidding false information on a marriage license as a Class D felony. We'll also make it a Class B misdemeanor punishable by up to eight, 180 days in jail and a maximum fine of $1,000 for clergy, judges, and others to perform a same-sex marriage. How You're literally dare. shutting it down. Yeah, shut that whole thing down, right? You're shutting that whole thing down. You know, and it, one real point about that, one of the things that I've always, like, couldn't understand about the religious right, and I'm sure you guys are listening to this because Jeff's uh, show is so amazing, but what do you, like, let's say you shut it all down. Let's say you outlaw it and it's all gone or whatever. Where are all the gay people going to go? You think they're just going to be quiet? You think they're just going to lay down and take that? No, they're gonna like you're gonna basically kick the hornet's nest, and then they can't understand. Well, why did we get stung? Why did you know? Why are the bees coming after us? Why is this? Why is that? Because you keep kicking the fucking hornet's nest. Stop kicking it. Stop. If you uh, well, don't want to have gay marriage, don't have too. a gay marriage. And here's the other thing too: is that these people, uh, on and on and on, you hear being gay is a choice. Being gay is a choice. We did a story last week about Paul Scalia. Uh, Antonin Scalia's son, right, who is uh, into this gay reparative or what is it, gay reparative therapy, right, to try and turn people. He says that, well, no, no, being being gay, it's not a thing, it's not real. People people aren't actually born gay. No, yeah. it's a choice, so they need to be punished for their choice. And this is the exact embodiment of that kind of that type of just just poisonous rhetoric. It's poisonous. And Jeff, uh, you know, I, I said that my brother's gay, and we've talked a lot about this kind of stuff. 
he gets asked these questions all the time. Well, when did you become gay or when did you choose to be gay? He said, oh, well, by the same time that you chose to be straight. A great you know, answer. Like, I agree with that. But, I mean, th this stuff is not hard, guys. Let's just move on. Let's go. You know, I'm so tired of doing this. But <laughs> it's, it's a wedge it. issue. It's it's all it is. It's it's a wedge issue. Yeah, and, and, I said and that's, before, that's a good point. I, 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 read, I read an article the other day that basically, you know, the – with the corporate takeover of America and the and the corporate whore nature of our Congress, if you the if the people in power basically put these wedge issues between us, then we can't we can't bond together. We can't like come together and say, Hey, wait back. a second, what's going on? Then we'll always be at each other's throats and they can do whatever the fuck they want. That's what's going on. Don't pay attention to any of this garbage. It's, it's, a, it's designed, a distraction it's from what's to, really going on. Right. How exactly. the banks are uh, how the banks and big corporations are taking your money, how they're bribing our government officials, they're bribing uh, all of our officials, and and they're they're working legal, against right? your it's best legal. interest. They're spying on you. They're doing right. all this. Spying on you, it doesn't matter. They, but they want you. The, like they want you to fight about gays getting married. And they, like, that's exactly right. And they want you to fight about uh, abortions, and they want you to fight about uh, all this stuff, where they, because they know it's so polarized. But at the end of the day, it's really not polarizing. Like it, you know, I mean, you might have this decision or that or that opinion or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, it, I mean, there's, versus, there's other things to talk about. <laughs> there really right. is. It, this isn't this isn't Democrat versus Republican. Okay. No. Well, I, I, when it comes down to the end of the day. It's the establishment. It's it's the wealthy, not all of them, but most of, most of the wealthy, the establishment, the corporations against the people. Squeeze, they're trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip. Yeah. So this is my message to all you all you big corporations. If you're listening to me right now, you have to be smarter than this. If you want the if you want a good future for not only yourself but for your business, you have to be smarter. Don't be a dummy. Don't be invest, a invest in your people, yeah. invest in your in your community, and you will see give, a reward. Give back to your employees. Give give them the bonuses that they deserve, that they worked hard for you for. And what you'll find is that they're going to take that money after they get rid of all these bills that they have piling up or whatever. They're going to take that money and they're going to use it. They're going to spend it. And that's going to be the stimulation that you're so desperately looking for. You don't need the government to step in. You don't need bailouts. You don't need any of this stuff. If you pay your people correctly and if you catch up with the times, you will see your economy get better. Be like Henry Ford with, with the Ford Corporation who knew in the bottom uh, – in, in his bones that if he gave money, if he, if he paid his employees a month, they were going to turn around and buy the car that he was making. So you are going to make money.